Peace and blessings and welcome to this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to fix your credit report, raise your credit score, and change your way of life by fixing your debt to income ratio, please go to www.heritagehiphop.com and click on the link for Transparent Credit Repair. They are giving 20% off of all services rendered by them to you so that's right if you go there and get your credit repair done your credit services looked at or anything they're giving you 20 percent of off of all services given to you the customer so make sure you check on your credit and fix your credit score because that is the way to fix life financially and long term through ownership so if you're ready to own something which is owning your own life owning your own score and getting debt away from your name go to www heritagehiphop.com and click on the link for transparent credit repair on this episode of the heritage hip hop podcast we talk to a legend i'm talking about a goat and if you don't understand why he's a goat then you're not hip-hop this episode we talked to fredro star of the mighty onyx hip-hop group fredro not only has made history with his lyrics but from being on television like shows like moesha being in movies like sunset park clockers and a new movie that talks about police brutality which we'll talk about in the interview he not only cements his legacy as a person who uses his microphone to give messages he's done it by appearing on the big screen to give us not only roles of someone we can relate to but messages that can enlighten humanity society and the hip-hop culture just the same so please make sure you give us your time today and listen to this great interview and i'll come back with the rest of my commentary when it's finished peace and blessings and welcome back to the heritage hip-hop podcast as you know we celebrate yesterday's greatness and introduce you to tomorrow's greats as well but today we talked to one of the goats and if you don't think he's a goat not only are you corny you don't know hip-hop please introduce yourself I can't introduce myself, man. Where we got, man? Nah, hi, this is your stuff. What's going on, bro? <laughs> Yo, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you, man. And I mean, when I heard I got this interview, I had to make sure I came with some, with some, with some great conversation from you because I know you hear the same questions for years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been doing it for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Over 30 years, hip hop. We came in the game in '93, so I mean, all the questions I've heard. I haven't heard too many different questions, man. So let's get it on, man. Let's let's get it popping. All right. So I want to start with our, our conversation, not with Onyx, because people should know who Onyx is by now. And if not, then do your homework. Onyx is the group that resurrected, resurrected Def Jam from a bad place. Onyx, mm. Redman. Y'all brought in Def Jam in a time when hip-hop was just starting to turn. How do you define 80s hip-hop, and where did you take it when the 90s came in? Oh man, eighties hip hop. There was a um, you know, eighties hip hop. I mean, you would say eighties. That's like ten years, right? Like eighties, like from eighty one to eighty nine. Like it's it's it it had some good parts and it had some bad parts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think eighties hip hop kind of gave us the lessons we needed to pursue hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like when Rock Kim came out, he told us not to eat pork. You know what I'm saying? And right. that, stuck, that stuck with me forever. You know what I'm saying? People like mm -hmm. G-Rat told me about Rikers Island. Like, you, you know, like, like you don't want to go to Rikers Island. So, you know, you know, we learned from our forefather, Slick Rick. He told us, treat him like a prostitute. Let me stop. But I'm just saying, it's <laughs> like, like, actually, we learned from them. That was our school. Like, you know, when they say old school, new school, like, they really taught us. It was things like Rakim, you know, like the things they taught us, we learned through music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, man, you know, I think 80s hip-hop was just, when hip-hop was raw, the beats were, um, the beats were very, very um, creative because there wasn't a lot of sample time. There wasn't right. a lot of, um, as far as music, there wasn't a lot of um, things you could really do sonically. So you had to, like, use every second on a sampler like the sb12 back in the days of probably only had like eight seconds of sample time so you would have to chop up a sample and drums and make everything all in what eight seconds of sample time so you know and then 
and then it, and then it, it, it progressed in the late 80s and then you had Kid and Play and the Salt Peppers that they came in and then hip hop got kind of um, you know kind of popish a little kind of soft as you know what I'm saying like house party okay. and all of that type of shit mm -hmm. that was cool but it wasn't like Rakim and G Rap it was, you know what I'm saying it was more you know more friendly right you know what I'm saying so the 80s was 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 up and down we we had the gangster shit we had the pop shit we had the uh the dope beats you know what I mean it was crazy I think because I don't want to just stay in the past. I want to also stay. I want to focus on you and go into the credit that I believe you deserve in the game that people don't give you enough. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like I said in the beginning, Fredro Starr is one of the goats of hip hop. Not only in Onyx, but himself. And I'm going to confess something to you. The first time I really paid attention to you on a high level was when you did the box talk interview for the last day's video. And when you did that, you showed not only that you are an MC, but you are a philosopher as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the classic, let me say this real slow so everybody can go and do their homework. The classic album, All We Got Is Us. Right? Yeah, classic. You, you set that album off with Last Days, but it was when you were on um, The Evil Streets that Fredro came to fuck out. The last day's process, what was that like? And did you know you were changing the world being profits at the time when you dropped the album? Nah, we didn't. I mean, when, when last day's and all we got is us dropped, that was on a second album. The mm -hmm. first album was, was back the fuck up. You know, it was hot sure. energy. Um, there were four members in the group on the first album. Mm -hmm. On the second, or third out, on the second album, Big DS wasn't even in a group, so there was wow. a lot of changes that we was going through from the first album to the second album. When the first album came out, we came out before Wu Tang, and when we came out before Wu Tang, we, um, you know, we got a lot of shit from the first album. I would say from people like God's Effects and Cypress Hill and Naughty by Nature, and those dudes that came before us, you know, we was looking at them like, oh, shit. Damn, what, what we gonna do? How we gonna come in the game? And Back the Fuck Up was the answer to that. Mm -hmm. With joints like Throw Your Guns and Slam and Shifty, like, we, it was more more about um, this is us and everybody gotta back the fuck up. That was the main objective for the whole album. So to do that, you have to be loud, obnoxious, just, you know, in your face, you know, that's how we came at it. But by the time we got to the second album, you know, Wu-Tang came out, um, you know, um, and then it was like, okay, I right, oh, shit, they doing it like that. Oh, you know what? We got to show, we got to show motherfuckers we, we nice with this pen shit, not just rappers who yell and scream. We had to show people that, yo, we nice with this rhyme shit. And that's when we started doing records like Purse Snatches, I run with purse snatchers, drug dealers and trespassers, incriminators, and parole violators. Violators. You know, violators. Like, yeah. And then, you know, joints like Last Days and Evil Streets, like you mentioned. Like, we was like, okay, we got to do something about Wu-Tang. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. that sec and even the second album, as far as production, the beats, you know, um, you know, rest in peace of shot skills, we're not here no more. Um, he, mm -hmm. he basically produced the first album. I mean, he basically produced the whole shit. Like, throw your guns, mm -hmm. shit be slam. You know, he produced all that shit basically. Shot skills. So by the second album, we took the production in our own hands. Me, Sticky, Sun C. We had um, Adolf the Assassin, Aguilar. You know, he was he was with us. Um, mm -hmm. We just we just were in the zone, and we went to our own little our own little bubble, you know what I mean? Our own little, we, 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 we copped the crib in Jersey, and we just was in our own space. Jam Master J wasn't even a part of the second album. Like, wow. Jam Master, he was, I mean, after we made the records, we played it for him, and he was part of the mixing process, but he wasn't mm -hmm. part of the recording process because we, like I said, we went into our own little, our own little bubble. Like, we was in Jersey, secluded from everybody in the studio with Rich Keller, Rich Keller, um, he would do, he does, does a lot of stuff with, with beats and all of that. 
But before he did that with Swiss, he was with us. We was in his crib, just just in our zone, and we came up with the All We Got Is Us album. That's how we did it. You know what I mean? That album. That's a, yeah, that's a great crazy. story, man. That's a great story. Because I wanted to focus on that album because I believe that album is lost because people don't talk about it enough. Back the Fuck Up is your first group project and everybody remembers that because throw your guns was crazy and everybody cannot deny slam slam had so many remixes <laughs> you know what i'm saying it ran its course and even when shut em down came out which was crazy that album is bananas like like they talk about those two albums but i had a, i had a debate on heritage hip-hop on our show if you would like to see it it's um called the mic council which is our talk show our real our view basically on hip hop. And I talked about on the, the title of the um so, of the of the episode was what's the difference between a classic and like classical music. And I believe all we got is us is one of those classics that's not talked about enough in hip hop. Well yeah, I, I say that, you know, but there's one I think I think out of that one album, the last days song was something that resonated to this day as far as the lyrics what we're saying mm -hmm. and as far as even the beat like like the last day's beat from all we got is us album you, you know that is not forgotten like i i can't like there's so many rappers who freestyled off that last day's track i mean i just heard black thought he just he just he just blacked out on like 20 different beats and th those that was one of the beats he that was on there. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. last in the eight mile movie, you know what I'm saying? As far as one of the beats they was freestyling on stage too. So that last day's beat is not forgotten. Even though the All We Got Is Us album may be, that the beat from last days in that song, I think it's just timeless. You know what I'm saying? It's just timeless and it's gonna always be one of the hottest beats in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like True. you know, Part part of you know beats like the Wick, beats like you know um, mm -hmm. fucking no B, uh, you know I get money like those mm -hmm. one of the beats that you can always say okay that's one of the the illest hip hop beats you know what I'm saying that's ever been made you know what I'm saying like yeah I, I think last days probably could be top ten one of the top ten best hip hop beats in hip hop ever okay I I rock with it. And, and coming from that conversation with you, to be to be able to get to that level, you have to be your MC and not a rapper. So I want to ask you, in in reference to New York and Queens in particular, but that's that's where you're from. How do you define the Queens MC when Queens has so many pockets and personalities within it in different type of areas? Um, like you said, Queens got a lot of different areas, so you got a lot of different. You know, um, style and shit. You know, a lot of different, you got a lot of different dope rappers from Queens, man. You got niggas that's not really talked about, man. That's dope from Queens. Niggas like Royal you Flush. You know, um, fucking, uh, fucking organized confusion. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, Large Professor. You know, Nick the Exotic. You know, um, you know, everybody knows Lost Boys, Onyx Fifty. You know, Nas. We all from Queens. You know. Queens get the money, man. It's just like we got a certain style of, of where we come from with our shit. You know, Harlem got a different style. Brooklyn got a different style. But it's all New York, man. It's all New York hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? And you take New York hip-hop personal. And I've noticed it in how you not only have transitioned from being in a group to the phenomenal album Firestar. The first one that was like crazy because when it dropped, when people heard the perfect bitch, everybody with bananas. It's like, oh, Fredro got it like that, and we and all the Onyx fans was like, nigga, you late. This man's been nice to not yeah. to, uh, to even to even taking it to the screen. Moesha, um, Sunset Park, Clockers, and things like that. What does hip hop represent for you that made you take it so personal and take it with you in everything that you do? I mean, hip hop is a way of life. You know, like when they say we're hip hop, it's just not that. It's just not like it's not like what you just see on Instagram or you know. And the, the hip hop is deep. Like you know, you got dudes who do hip hop and they just break dance. 
You know, you got dudes who do hip hop, they just DJ. You know, people, you got people who do hip hop who just do the knowledge on hip hop. They just live it every day and they, they research it and they study it. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop, yeah. um, there's five elements. Hip hop is, is, is the way of life. You know what I'm saying? And the way I see it is my way of life and it's my way of surviving the streets, surviving the pitfalls of life, you know what I'm saying? Like, hip-hop is, 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 the, is the one vehicle that can kind of drive you through, through the fucking path, you know what I'm saying? It, like, it, it, it's a profession, but it's also, like I said, a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? You, you get to travel the world, you get to feed your family, and you get to put out music, and you make money for the rest of your life. You know, Kanye West is, right now, he's, been, he's making a big point, and, you know, artists owning their masters and, and how mm-hmm. artists are not getting their fair just as far as you know with these corporations and I, I really understand that because like you said when we came out Def Jam was in the hole with Sony Records um, they was down like 40 million 40 million dollars you know what mm. I'm saying and when, like you said and when Onyx Red Man and Method Man got on the label we gave Russell and Leo Cohen the power to negotiate a better deal with Sony Records. Our second album, All We Got Is Us, was on Sony Records. I mean, was on mm. was on Polygram Records. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The first album was on Sony Records. So we was on two different, it was two different uh, dis- distribution companies that produced, that, that distributed our album. But, you know, we mm. were young. We don't know what's going on. But the way Kanye put it down, like, we should have had a stake in that. We should have had an equity in that. You know what I mean? But... You know, it's not like that, and it'll never be like that. But it's, you know, hip-hop is now, you can take control of it. Now you can be independent. You can put your music out the way you want to put it out, promote it the way you want to promote it, and you can kind of uh, control more of your destiny now. So it's, it's definitely growing into a better place. You know what I mean? So as a legend in the game, as someone that real hip-hoppers truly respect, I want to get your perspective on the business side since you brought it up. When when you first came into the game, the contracts were different. Now contract, I mean, e- contracts even turned twenty, thirty years ago when ringtones got big. Now the third party, the, the I call it I call it the slave catcher, which is the streaming services now dictate money and popularity. How do you translate? How do you transition your old contract to getting paid from? In stores, tapes and CDs now to streams. How do they fairly compensate you? Um, you'll never get fairly compensated. Um, you know, it's like this, man. You know, these record labels, believe me, record labels or or they owe artists a lot of money. You know, like artists who might have signed with a record label way back and they stop getting more. Like your your record never stops making money. So if your label stops paying you, they still owe you money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'll never get a fair share. You'll never get a fair share. Um, you know, you, you'll need the best lawyers and the best uh, auditors to audit books and shit like that. It's just, it's just a big mess. That's why it's better to put your own music out and don't worry about that shit. Put your own music out and nobody can't cheat you. And that's what we've been doing. We've been, you know, uh, putting our own records out independently. Um, and But we do work with, we, we, we work with, a label named Cleopatra. Cleopatra is a cool label because they always invested in us and we got a cool relationship with them. And um, me and Sticky working on an album called Onyx for Life right now. That's that's crazy, right? I mean, real hip hop shit. This this now this album reminds me of Back the Fuck Up. It reminds me of Shut Him Down, and it reminds me of All We Got Is Us. This next album it reminds me of all the albums because the mm-hmm. flow changes up on different records, like like. Some records, I'm like, I'm going back to the first album flow. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and there's a beat that might take me to, like, the last days vibe. And you know what I'm saying? And, and then, then I might hear something that might take me to, like, you know, the Shut em Down swag. But we fuck with X1 rest in peace. Like, that whole sound. You know what I'm saying? So this Honest for Life album is crazy. It'll probably be out, you know, top of the, top of the new year. Because this year is crazy. 2020 is, I just wanted to end. I don't want to end, but I... Yeah, the end. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to drop the new album, Onyx for Life, 2021, all hip-hop joints. We got Capadonna on the album um, so far, uh, Planet Asia. He came through. He jumped on the joint. Um, it's almost it's almost finished, so, you know, it's crazy. 
I will be I will be getting that album when it drops because I always support every Onyx album that's ever dropped. You know, I have all your albums. I'm not trying to stand on the phone. The point of me saying that is when you really love hip hop, you support the ones that have supported you by giving you good music. That's why we're against streaming or heritage hip hop. We always say buy the music. Don't stream. You stream to see if you like it, but buy it if you like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I mean, you can, you can buy albums from Easy right now. You know, if you got a, a you know su- subscription to Apple Music or Spotify, or whatever. It, it's, it's they, you know, it is what it is. They're gonna get it the way they want to get it. Just listen to it and enjoy it. However, you gotta fuck it. Listen to it. I wouldn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wouldn't give a okay. fuck if you gotta if you gotta steal a CD, steal a fucking you know, do what you gotta get, just get the shit. Vibe out. I feel that. You know what made Onyx? so beloved in New Jersey, especially in my circle. Shout out to my peoples like Scent and everybody who was Onyx fans back in back in the day till now. We loved y'all because y'all always were in the hood and street level. Just like Tretch and Naughty by Nature, y'all were always street level. So it was like when we seen y'all, y'all got the respect that most people had to fight for. And the one thing that keeps that respect going with me to you, man to man, is that you just you recently did a movie with Alonzo Haran. You did the Fearless one. You did the King of yeah. North series. Yeah. That was big yeah. for me because that means not only do you keep working, but you work street level to keep hip hop alive and to show people no matter how big you are, you always have to come home. Why is that important to you? Well, shout out to Alonzo, man. He's a good brother from Jersey. Um, always always show love. We always be building on the phone and talk about we like we like he's cool. Like he's like a big bro. You know what I'm saying? Like. So, you know, like you said, I'm always going to respect things from the ground up, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to say streets, but just from the level of coming from from where we come from. You know what I'm saying? And and, and we mm-hmm. all want to express ourselves with, with projects as far as rapping and movies. So I'm, I'm going to back that. I'm going to back anything from the streets. You know what I'm saying? I got these kids uptown called Stack Town. They from Harlem. Niggas is dope. You know what I'm saying? Shout to Nate the Great. Audio Rob and them dudes, man. They got some crazy shit. So this kid, Nate the Great, he 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 does throw your guns over. You know what I'm saying? I hate to cut. Like, he did the shit over. He did my verse and Sticky verse over. So I heard that shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? So I hollered at him and shit. And then we started building. And he's a real good dude from the streets of Harlem. And we just pulled up on I just pulled up on his video two days ago in New York. He didn't even know I was coming. They was shooting the video. I, I came through. So look out for that. It's called Onyx. I'm like, yo, how the fuck did you even get the song on iTunes and all that? So anyway, man, I represent fucks with the streets. You know what I'm saying? Bloods, Crips, it don't matter. It don't matter. Like, you know what I'm saying? We represent everything, like, and everybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what we bring together. We we, could, we we bring niggas together with this music shit. You know what I'm saying? And and, and hip hop brings everybody together. You know what I'm saying? White, black, Spanish, Russian, whatever. We all rocking to one beat, you know what I'm saying, hip-hop, and there's no genre of music that does that, there's, you know, rock and roll doesn't do that, and come on, you know country music ain't gonna do that, hip-hop is the, the glue, the foundation to the world, if you think about it, I mean, as far as even, like, you know, hip-hop is, is, is basically made billions of dollars for companies, like, you know, they're marketing products behind hip-hop, and we, the, the young crowd is the streets, man. Look, look at TikTok and you, you look at YouTube, man. You see what these kids are doing. I mean, it's different hip hop than I like, but it's still hip hop, I guess, right? I guess, but I mean, it's, it's not to be questioned because I'm gonna take what you said and elevate it with you. Hip hop yeah. is not music. Yeah. People always focus on rap, but hip hop yeah. is not yeah. music. I believe hip hop is God's manifestation within us. Right. Because we always we always talk about the drum within the beat. And the drum of your life is your heart, and your heart beats. So that's like a that's like a that's like a parallel to hip hop right there. In music, we make harmony. When your body systems and health work together, your body has a rhythm that's called harmony. When you take mm-hmm. journeys in life, you take steps. When you write notes yeah. on lines on sheet paper, that's called steps. Mm-hmm. So hip hop can do that because it's alive. And like I said to you earlier. When you made last days, you talk about bushing shots to Tom Warner's and one of one of Brother Records and all that. You was you was prophesying about the things that were to come. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I salute I salute you not only for being a purveyor of the world. 
but you will always drop you will all you will always drop jewels in not only your role your roles in movies, but you drop jewels in your rhymes. Why is it important for the jewel to always be there and not to just rhyme like people are doing today? Wow, you said bust your shot to Tom Warner. Let's let's chill out with that. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. I mean, like I said, when we came in the game, it was, when we came in the game with with the Rakims and the Big Daddy Kings, and you know, and they would say something that just like they, it, it would just be like one thing they might say in a verse that you that you will remember. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like I like to implement that too. Like. I learned from them, so I'm gonna, you know, do the same thing because it's just that's just the way it is. It's not nothing I'm trying to do. It's just like okay, if you learn how to dribble a certain way from a certain dude that dribbles the ball, then that's just it's gonna come natural that way. You know what I'm saying? And that's it just comes natural when I'm writing. You know, this is where I'm from. I'm from that era. You know what I mean? Mm. And I stay in my era. I don't try to like, you know, once in a while I might, you know, do some different type of shit. You know, this and that, but. For the most part, I'm just staying in my era. You know what I'm saying? It's cool to play on different courts, you know, rhyme on different beaches. It's cool to swim in different type of waters, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know what works best for you, and that's what we've been doing. We hooked up with the Snow Goons. You know, we started doing records with those dudes from Germany, producers. And um, they beats was matching our frustration. Like, they beats, even though it was coming from Germany and it was, German mm-hmm. producers, this shit was it's hitting hard, you know what I'm saying? Like the album Wake the Fuck Up is a straight hip hop. I, I think it's a classic, you know what I'm saying? In today's hip hop, that's mm-hmm. like a classic album. Like the niggas don't even know about the Wake the Fuck Up album. Mm-hmm. They're like, listen to that, like, oh shit, like, okay, mm-hmm. all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what we do. We just, we just keep it hip hop because we know what, we know, we know what the people who fuck with us want. So we just gonna keep giving it to them like that, you know what I'm saying? Paul, I feel Paul. that. I feel that. So then let's take the interview to another level then, because to be a consummate artist, you grow and you experience in your art to make your canvas bigger and more refreshing. What yeah. keeps your pen fresh so you always come with it, even though people may not understand what they're getting when they first hear it? Um, what keeps the pen fresh? Um. I think, me personally, I just think it's the producers, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you might not even be thinking about hip-hop or thinking about, you know, even, like, putting a project together. Because, you know, when I do albums, it's like, okay, once I start, I know what I'm doing. This is what it is. I'm going to start the project. You know what I'm saying? I don't just mm-hmm. go in the studio to just do a just do a song here and there. You know what I'm saying? I go to the studio like, okay, we're working on this. This is what we're doing. Let's get it done. That's what it is. So, you know, that that just keeps my 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 pen like you know like strong. It's the beats. You know what I'm saying? Working with when when I heard beats from Audible Doctor and I did the um the Made in the Streets album. You know, I was I was in L. A. for Dolo, um, and I just heard Audible Doctor and his beats just. I was like, oh shit, this shit, okay, all right, I see what's going on. And we just, we just created, to me, that, you know, that album is kind of crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? With Audible Doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it was the beats, you know what I mean? Then you finish that project, and then, you know, you hear, you hear something else that might inspire you from another producer, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, okay, we got another, we got another sound, I'm feeling this vibe, all right, let's go. So it's the beat to me, man. It's the, it's the production. Shout to all the producers, man. You know, because I know I, I do beats. You know, I produce the last day's beat. You know, so I know how hard it is to do beats. You know what I'm saying? It's easy, but it's hard at the same time. So shout to the producers that's inspiring niggas 10. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just the world. I mean, look look what's going on in the world. So, you True. know, that inspires you. Other artists inspire me. When I see niggas nice niggas in the game, like Conway and them niggas, like niggas like that, they need to put to niggas, niggas is nice, you know what I'm saying? So that's inspiration to be like, okay, hip-hop is still alive, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my nigga Jay Nice and them niggas, left it on and them niggas, you know, um, they, they want to come up too. So there's a lot of nice niggas that's still out here, man, you know? Yeah. 
I think what makes you refreshing to people like me who grew up with you is the fact that you're podcasting now. And we always want to know the perspective of the people that's in the game in a way that we've never been in the game. You know, like, like, like you can hear two people talk about basketball, but when you hear LeBron and, J and Michael Jordan and Melo talk about ball, the elevation of the conversation is different. Why did you want to get into podcasting and bring that out? Yeah, man, you know, um, shout to niggas like Noriega, Joe Button, <laughs> you know, um, Charlemagne the God, <laughs> my dude. Um, <laughs> you, you know, it's like, you know, they paved the way for the podcast, you know what I'm saying? And I, I really, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person that likes to talk. I like to express myself verbally, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the I've always been like that, you know what I'm saying? When I started in Queens, I was a barber. That's how I started. That's how I bought my first car, my first, my first everything. I bought my own shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not selling drugs, but cutting all the drug dealers' hair and talking to them and talking to every different person that sat in my chair it gave me the ability to communicate with a lot of different walks of life. I had lawyers in my chairs, drug dealers, kids. Sports players, mobsters, killers, everything was coming to get a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever you're doing, like, you got to get a haircut. It doesn't matter. So me doing a podcast is just something I've always done. I've always been able to, to express myself verbally and talk. You know what I'm saying? So why not do a podcast? The game about to come on right now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm going with Boston, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm fucking with Boston. You know what I'm saying? So... It's, it's about the, I think they're going to tie the series tonight, and it's going to be right. right. So I like to talk about sports and, you know, hip-hop. That's it. So Rappers and Ballers, that's the name of the podcast. Shout out to my nigga Johnny Voga. And um, we just we just chopping it up, man, just talking shit, you know, about sports, smoking a little weed, you know what I mean? Regular, well, that's regular shit. Well, well, shout out to y'all for Oakley versus Barkley because I love that track. That's my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, my, yeah. Yeah. that's my yeah. joint right I think we gonna. I think we trying to debate. Yeah, we put a um a EP to go with the um the podcast. We got an EP called yeah. Rappers and Ballers. The podcast is called Rappers and Ballers. Johnny Vogel, he's from Long Island. He rhyme. You know, he got a little, got a little. Uh, let's say like a little Jay Z, a little. But yeah, we, you know what I'm saying. But we bounce, we bounce ill on tracks together. Like, so we was like, yo, let's go in the studio. With the studio with these dudes called um local astronauts. From LA, they got some banging ass beats, and we just knocked out an EP. I swear to God, Johnny, like I didn't pick up a pen on none of this shit. Like everything was freestyle. No, one of the joints I, I wrote, I wrote in my phone, but everything else was just freestyle. Like not freestyle, but just like off the head, like, off the dome, right? Like whatever comes naturally, let it come and shit. And you know, yeah, rappers and ballers, man. That EP is crazy, man. You know, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like the early basketball themes, and I like the hip hop themes in the last couple songs that you put on there. Yeah, it kind of yeah, it, it, it kind of showed growth in you because you're still growing. Because a man never stops growing until he dies, you know. And yeah. even with the EP, a couple of joints, I'm liking how you changed your style because you're very you're you're, you're very premeditated in your rhyme patterns. I've seen through the years, and this one, it seemed like you was just kicking the rhymes and feeling the vibe of it. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well I, I don't want to be ever pre, pre, premeditated, but, you know, yeah. So I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely just feeling the groove and falling in different pockets with the flow, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and but through all the rhymes, we always kind of paraphrase sports in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, give me the rock. Nobody shoot better than me. You know what I'm saying? That's what Kobe said, and that's the mama mm -hmm. mentality. When I did that joint, he was like, you don't call it my mentality. I was like, shit, shit, give me the rock. Shit, nobody shoot better than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have that mentality mm. in life. And I like that. To Kobe Bryant, man, you know? I got to freestyle with Kobe Bryant, man, like, a couple of times. Bro. Yeah? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, he came to the set. He said, because he did Moesha. He, right, he did right. Moesha. The Moesha came down, he was freestyling with me. My mom Bentley, rest in peace, he was... Yo, Beast Allen just chilling, man. He loves hip hop. He loves hip hop. That's yeah. one thing. Cause he was coming to the set, not even, even when he was even filming, just to come fuck around and rhyme and just chill. You know what I'm saying? So, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe was definitely real hip hop all the way. When we finish this interview, I'm going to give you something called the rapid fire questions. They're not yes, no questions, but they're questions I really want to ask you outside of the genre that I, I would love to see you in. So I just prepped you for that. Everybody that's listening, this is Karev from Heritage Hip Hop on the line with the GOAT, one of the GOATs. If you don't believe he's a GOAT, you're not hip hop. This is Fredro Starr of the Mighty Onyx right here. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really get excited to interview a lot of people, but there's some that are really like moving. You, Raz, Cash, Yo-Yo, not to big up everybody, focus on you. And it's phenomenal for me to get to talk to my heroes when it comes when it comes to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you say Raz, Cash, I be saying yo, Raz, Cash. I say Raz, Cash. Yeah, that's a New York thing. I know. <laughs> like, yo, why do you always call me Raz, Cash? I'm like, yo, son, your name's Raz, Cash. So who's Raz? <laughs> That's my son. <laughs> my man. Right That's my guy. True indeed. He, he, he's very I want to ask. I want to ask you this question though. You did a movie called Equal Standard. Mm. That is a classic movie, especially mm. in today's times. With today, we just heard that the cops who murdered Breonna Taylor are not getting charges brought against them, and we know it for how they were boarding up the city to tell people the news. Of course, I mean, listen. Even if they got charged, they was not going to get charged. You know what I'm saying? They be yeah. playing with us, and they they always playing with us. And, you know, it's, that, I mean, even standard movie, it, 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 it's timeless. Like, that movie will be in any time because it's always going to be like this. I don't give a fuck who's at the presidency. You know, when, when, shit, when Obama was the president, they were still killing motherfucking niggas, right? They were yep. still shooting black in the back, right? It don't matter yep. who's the president. Even though the president we got right now is just, he's crazy. Even though niggas is eating up the PPP loans and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> niggas mm -hmm. is like, keep Trump in office. But um, mm -hmm. on some real shit, it's like, you know, we always going to get, you know, um, we always going to be trapped in America. A black man trapped in America. I don't give a fuck. So the movie Equal Standard, yes, it's a classic, man. Shout to Taheen, um, the, 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 uh, the director and the writer of the movie. Um, bright brother, man, from Queens. From, from, he's actually from Queensbridge Projects. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, well, he got a classic. He's up for a lot of awards. We all up for awards with the movie. It's, you know, independent movie making. You know, you got Ice T in the movie, Hassan Johnson. Um, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, it's a cast. We got a lot of people in that movie. Selena um, Johnson, my bad. Not somebody like Selena Johnson, yeah, my bad. Selena yeah, Johnson, yeah, let's not get it fucked up. Yeah, my yeah, bad, bro. Tobias, Tobias, Tobias and shit. Yeah, so that movie is a classic because, yeah, these police, yo, every time I see police, like, if, if I'm driving down the street and I see police lights in front of me, I'm going to make a turn. I don't give a fuck if this the right, like, I I'm, I'm just don't want to be, like, and like, and that's fucked up that we gotta live like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. When people get behind us, we get scared. To you don't even have nothing wrong with you. Nothing in the car, no weed, nothing, and you still get nervous, right? Because we just don't want the interactions with police. Because they, we've seen too many times how it can go wrong from zero to sixty that fast. You know what I'm saying? And and it, that could be anybody, any day. You know what I'm saying? So, and this is fucked up. So, yeah, Equal Standard, the movie is out. If you want to watch it, you got to go to watch EqualStandardMovie.com and check it out because, you know, Taheem, he didn't want to sell out to Netflix and, you know, he wanted to keep it, you know, independent. independent. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Control his destiny, not just take a check and sell out. So, if you want to watch right. Equal Standard movie, man, watch EqualStandardTheMovie.com. Google that shit, whatever you got to do, but you should definitely see it. Sure. Exactly. And one of the most powerful scenes, it was two scenes in the movie that summed up the movie powerfully. You play a crip in the movie and Tretch plays a blood, right? Yeah. And Ice-T is the OG that kind of got the, the gangs together to talk about what's going on with the police and everything in the city. Yeah. And I don't want to give the movie away, but that scene was the coming together of the two gangs. Even when cops tried to harass your character... Well, MREC was in there with you. You're harassing your characters at the buildings. MREC. But there's also a scene at the end where the cop gets resolution with both of the gangs 
and he raises his fist to show unity. What do you think we will take? It would take to make not just hip hop, but those streets, the the not street people, everybody of color, raise their fist together and band under the banner of hip hop or the love of hip hop to be unified to fight the system. It's going to take a miracle. <laughs> mm. It's going to take a miracle, man. Um, now I've said it, I think at best, he said, when I start the revolution, all you probably do is will. Like, it's always that one brick in the foundation that's going to fucking, like, make this shit, like, you know what I mean? It's all, I mean... I don't, it's like I said, it's going to take a miracle, man. Um, mm. For me, I just think that we just need more and more and more and more black police officers. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's more black police officers, maybe less black people will be getting killed. I don't know. I hope. Because I, hope. I, think, I think if there's more black police officers, they could kind of like internally regulate the white officers. And I'm, I'm talking about be like all the people marching, you know, Black Lives Matter. What if all those Black Lives Matter were police? It would mean a lot more. You feel what I'm saying? Because then you would have that protest inside the police department. You feel what I'm mm. saying? So, you know, it's just a thought. I don't know. This is why this is why I call you a goat because one of the greats can give you perspective where one of the people who are not great just give you an opinion. And perspective is not only being in the game, it's overlooking the game to give direction, incentive, and inspiration to those who are going to pick up when you leave off. Salute the Federal Star. Before we end the interview, can you please give your social media and tell them what's coming out so they can look for it and get it? Yeah, man. My name is Federal Star, man, from Queens. Actually, I'm from Brooklyn. Move to Queens. Oh. You know, and Queens get the money. And, um, yeah, man, you can holler at me on Instagram, Onyx HQ. That's, that's, that's it, man. Holler at the Onyx HQ or you can hit the Federal Star page, whatever, man. We got Onyx merch. You know what I'm saying? Onyx merch. So we got all that. We got the best logo in hip hop. So we got the best merch in hip hop. You know what I mean? That mad face. Shout to Sticky Fingers. Um, shout to Good Friday Entertainment. Um, DJ or Dash producing the next Onyx for Life album. And we out, man. Gonna watch this game tonight, man. Boston, let's go. Shout out to my Boston niggas, Marky Boston. What up, Boston Rob? What up? All right. So before we go, let's hit the rapid fire questions, which are not yes, no questions. They're questions that serve the public with your depth of hip hop knowledge and also to show how much of an MC you truly are. Are you ready for this? Uh, yeah, man. I'm ready. Okay. For man. Well, first question. What what song from another artist's catalog, song or album, perfectly describes you? Um, uh, Rakim. Mm, what, you got a song I in particular album? I sure said it before. Ooh, okay. Mike describes me no more. Come on, son. That that describes me right there. I got you. That's 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 a great one. I appreciate that. My next question is: New York is a kingdom within itself. All boroughs have their own personalities, and to come out of a borough, especially to get a record deal, you have to get signed. You have to because that makes you that much more of a of a, of a testament to the borough. You know. Yeah. My question is: My question is, outside of Onyx, who in that vein represents New York in a way where wherever they go, they are New York no matter what? Uh, uh, Nas. Hmm. That's a great answer. Straight from Queens. <laughs> nah, he's always got the Mets hat on or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, yo, he's really the only dude that be rocking the Mets hat. Everybody rock the Yankee hat, so that's kind of ill. But um, yeah, yeah Nas just represents a New York hip hop or Queens hip hop to a level where I think everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One thing that makes me love hip hop is hip hop is bigger than music. Even on Heritage Hip Hop, we have a subsidiary called Blurred Hop, where we celebrate hip hop in video games, comic books, anime culture, etc. I remember Onyx was on the game Rap Jams, and y'all were not fully represented the way we wanted you to be. And as we've seen hip hop elevate with like um, 
Mark Echo's um, Get Up Game. Yeah. 50 Cent had a game. What other genre would you like to see Onyx go into that will immortalize it in another capacity of hip hop? Oh man. Um Yo, we already doing the Onyx Jew and Sneaker we in the sneaker game with Ewans, man. We got the nice. Onyx doing joints, but um I would say I would say yo, I, I just think Onyx and basketball we go together like Slam is our biggest record. Um, Slam magazine probably stole the the title from us. Um, <laughs> keep it real, cause not nah, for real. I did the knowledge on that, cause I was like, damn, Slam magazine. Which one came out first? And yeah. and, and director Slam came out before Slam magazine. But I think Onyx getting into the basketball world, and we always in the basketball. I mean, guys is always, you know, slamming to to Slam, and they had the Paul George commercial with Gatorade with the Slam in the background. Onyx in basketball, man. Onyx in the NBA. That's it. Mm. We, we gonna, we'll do all our halftime games. Just once we, once the coronavirus is off, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's I like how you said that. That's, that's what OG's supposed to do. Just, you know, do smooth shit like that. I like how you said that because I'm not going to lie. When NBA Inside stuff was on there, Slam was always on the damn show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of people don't know, like, like ESPN and you know sports, they they license Slam over a thousand times a year. Like bro, it's just crazy. Like you know what I'm saying? It's real crazy. Keep like, them checks coming in, right? Hear, every time you hear on television, it, it, has, it has to be it's a license for that. They, you know, so Slam is definitely part of the NBA. Onyx needs to do all the NBA halftime games after the coronavirus. <laughs> Keep the checks coming in. I ain't mad at you. Word. Oh. So here's a side question then. Why hasn't yeah. Onyx ever gotten into the AAU arena and did something with the kids? The AAU arena. Hmm. Well, maybe we need to, right? Yes. I think you should come to Jersey. I have a team, the Hilltopper Heat. My, my stepson, he graduated from their program. They always want people to give back. You come to Jersey anyway. Why not do it with the Hilltopper Heat? Be you nice. know what? And then, and then we'll mix it up with the rappers and ballers too. So you know what I'm saying? Cause why not? Actually, one of my one of my one of my good friends in LA, his son is in the AAU and um, killing him, killing him. I don't know his name, so I don't I don't, I don't want to. Uh, but he's crazy. He's doing his thing. Shout to all the young dudes coming up, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause they they the future. That's the future. that's right. That's right. My next question. We're not gonna prolong it too long. I know you wanna watch the game. We ain't gonna do that, all that. But my next, my next question is a very important question when it comes to Federal Star, the man, and the MC. As you experience life, you also give life, and you're the father to two strong young men. Mm-hmm. And now your legacy even becomes more pronounced because now you have something to give to two individuals who are going to take not only your name but their names into the future. How has fatherhood made you a better artist and a better MC? Oh, man, you know. It's, uh, you know, now you look at the game from a different, you know, perspective when you, when you first came in the game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I, I got to, um, I got to, I've been leading my crew. I've been leading Onyx. I've been leading Honey Mad, Fishy Mad. I'm a good leader, I, I think. You know what I'm saying? As far as on the hip-hop level, is, I think I think we've done a lot of ill shit in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And I've always been a dude to set all the records off. Mm. So if I set off all the records, then I must be the leader of that movement, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now it's time to lead my youngins, my, my, my shorties, you know what I'm saying? Now it's time mm. to put that into them and show them this is how you do it, you know what I'm saying? Hold their hand, you know what I'm saying? Of course, the rough waters and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, I be having dreams, man, like me me being in the fucking rough water, like and 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 the, and the water's like coming up to my fucking and, and I gotta carry both my my sons on my back to get over the water, like you know what I'm saying? Like how do I carry both of them? Like you know what I'm saying? Put one in each hand, put one in the front, one in the back, both of them on my shoulders. Like I be having wild dreams, man, because I know I gotta lead them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Through the rough waters and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that water represents life because you're guiding exactly. them through 
the turbulence that could come. And that's what, AR, salute to you as your father, as a father, and salute to your boys. Salute. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Good looking, D. Yeah, no doubt. Two more questions, and then we're going to finish up. The next question, which I think is a question that um is a funny question, but it's not really, you know, the thing is, Onyx was a group of, what was it, five of you or four? Because Shot Skills counts too. So it was four, five? It was four. Shot Skills was, he was just a producer, but he was, you know, he okay. was part of the whole, but yeah, it was just four, four guys signed to that gym. Big DS. R.I.P. Yeah. R.I.P. to Big yeah. DS, because he was a part, yeah. part of that group as well. He was the now, founder. Big DS was, was, was definitely the founder of Onyx. Me and him started it together. Wow. And then... Then Sunsea came along after, like, then Sticky. Okay. So yeah. in in the legacy of hip-hop, the group has always been a pivotal part of hip-hop, whether people did solo projects or whatever. Unity and sound has always been important. Besides Onyx, who are the groups that represent hip-hop the most in history to you? Chocolate mm. Quest. Mm, Okay. Right? Child Call the Quest is hip-hop, straight up, to you. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Hell. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I still, I'll put it like this. Out of all the groups, I still listen to Child Call Quest the most. Out of all the groups. I don't uh, know why. Peter I, I, maybe, maybe it's the, the drums. Ali Shahi Muhammad, Johnny, Q-Tip Production, I mean, Fight Dog, Queens, you know. Yeah, you, know, you can't forget about Child Call Quest. They from Queens. And, and they are a big part of the movement. And, um, yeah, I think Sharko Quest represents real hip-hop. I mean, you ain't going to get no realer than that. I, I would say Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang equally, but I, I listen to Sharko Quest. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot. You know? And I, my, my kids like Sharko Quest, so I, I got I can't play Wu-Tang Clan. Ain't nothing to fuck with too much around my kids. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. You know? So, you know, can I kick it is... The go to, you know what I'm saying? Shit like check the Romney, that's what they rocking with. So Chocolate no. Quest is kinda of like something that I can um share with my kids and we can both enjoy that moment. Those moments together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, besides Onyx, and this is just my opinion, I don't think Onyx is a hip hop group. I think Onyx is a music group. Y'all transcend hip hop. Like LL Cool J transcends hip hop. Naughty by nature yeah. transcends hip hop. Between y'all and Nordy, y'all were the first groups that taught us ownership, even before Wu-Tang, because Onyx had, the, like you said, the best logo. Them and the Wu-Tang W are synonymous with greatness. And then you had Nordy who had the, their own store. So it was like yeah. y'all taught us the game and a whole other prospect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once yeah. again, Nordy that makes y'all go. Nordy had the whole merch shit popping up. Killing exactly. Me. That's what made y'all goats. And I mean, and I mean, we're going to finish off this interview on this question. Um, everybody on us again, this is Karev thinking federal star of Onyx, the, a, the, a goat. Whether it comes to acting or music or influencing the world through his stories, check the podcast. Federal star is a name that's going to go down in the hip hop hall of fame as being one of the best ever. And we want you to recognize that. Now, with that being said, you don't have to have an album out or anything. You could come on Heritage Hip Hop if you ever want to just do anything. You know what I'm saying? Because we have an open door policy. We're not, we're not, we're not industry stuck up, snootish. And we don't ride nobody's dick. We really, we, we really support the culture. So, with that being yeah. said, with that being said, here's a final question: A thousand years from now, you're not going to walk this planet. May the Most High bless you, and your family, your sons, and everybody. So, it's, especially during COVID and police brutality in 2020, we pray nothing happens to your family. So, blessings on you first before we finish this question. All right. A thousand years from now, you're not going to walk on this planet. But in the Bronx, they're building the Hip Hop Museum, where they're going to highlight the best movements and people throughout the history of hip hop. And Onyx is going to be... Alex is going to be memorialized not only in music but in movies. And when it, and they come to read the bio of Fredro Star, and a kid a thousand years from now not only read your bio but hears Firestar, Firestar Two, Rappers and Ballers, and all the many albums and, and songs that you made, and even see the clips of you in not only the, the current movies you have, the future classics you do now. You're going to leave inspiration on them. So my question to you is. 
what is the legacy of Virgil Starr, and how did you make the world better because you were hip hop? What is the legacy? Of, huh. That's a crazy question, man. How you? I'm supposed to answer that. <laughs> By just telling the truth. Um, <laughs> um yo. Shit, I'm a product of Jam Master J, man. You know, I'm a product of Jam Master J, who is a product, who is actually the godfather of hip hop. Mm -hmm. I'm godfather, I'm godfather in hip hop. Like, the way I came in, I, like, I came in like I was godfathered in. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm part of the fabric of hip hop. I came in hip hop with Run DMC. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So my legacy will be just just a Queens, just somebody that represented Queens everywhere everywhere I went, man. I, I'm just I'm just Queens to the death, man. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Well, well everybody out there. Okay. Okay. And that's 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 what I read. Well, everybody out there that's listening. Virgil Starr only gave you many jewels this interview, but he said, always represent where you're from because where you're from is the character, characterization of who you are. No matter where you're, it's not where you're from is where you're at, but where you're from builds the character of who you are. So make sure you always stay true to who you are and the people you come from because hip-hop is not about the beats. It's about the people and God. That's why we are here. We are, her, her, we are the hip-hop, the heritage of hip-hop. We are heritage hip-hop. Salute. Yeah, salute. So with that being said, this is Karev and Fredjo saying peace, and we out. We thank you for listening to this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. We got to give a shout out to MJ Hip Hop Connects for hooking us up with this interview with Fredro Star. Fredro Star is very instrumental in hip hop for the long seeable future with podcasting and telling his stories, which he's one of the first to do it on the internet. But more so, great music and also being on the actor stage to give people visuals of what hip hop is and how the hip hop characterization can be credited for helping moving the culture forward. So salute to Fredro, salute to Onyx. We hope to get sticky on here one day and talk even deeper. You know, classic albums and classic music has come from the Onyx camp and we look forward to more. For everybody out there that's listening to this, we thank you for not only paying attention, but supporting the podcast. Heritage Hip Hop Podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere that you catch your your, uh, your, your podcast needs. You know, um, more than that, we are at www.heritagehiphop.com and Heritage Hip Hop on all social media. Why not you book your interview now? Heritage Hip Hop is more than music. We celebrate God's heritage, which is you, the heritage of hip hop, and we believe in people and not playlists so if you have a story you want to tell why you promote your music why you promote your your media whether it's music books we'll talk about politics anything that's what heritage hip-hop is for we are the gatekeepers of the stories of the people that make hip-hop what it is and it's great more than anything else this episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to change your credit score and open your wallet to receive more money instead of paying out more debt, changing your credit score will help change your life. If you're looking to do such, go to www.heritagehiphop.com and click on the link for Transparent Credit Repair. They are giving 20% off of all services given to people who go through the Heritage Hip Hop link. So we invite you to go to our website, Get free music, look at the videos, but more so also to help change your life. Before we get out of here, we want to give our shout outs to everybody who helps, who helps makes this show happen. It's more than just me. We want to give a shout out to BQ of Fatty's Place. Get well, B. We want you back home. We'd like to give a shout out to Michael Bradley of Transparent Credit Repair. We'd like to give a shout out to Fire Jaws of Wildfire Marketing. New music coming soon from him. Shout out to Lex Diamonds. Diamonds Entertainment LLC new sports podcast out right now. Would like to give a shout out to the Good Fellas, which is DJ Big A, DJ Tommy Gunn, Sha Montana, and Dab the Photographer. Check out AEP underscore presents on Facebook, the, the Big A Show, GoodfellasTV.com for more. Everybody out there listening, we appreciate you and thank you so much. So please. Feel free to come to Heritage Hip Hop and explore the depths of what hip hop truly is. It's not beats. It's not rhymes. 
It's not even graffiti and dance. It's God's expression within you and you telling your story to the world to know that not only do you matter, but you exist. Please, everybody, stay safe and stay healthy during this time. Make sure you prepare for this so this second wave that's supposed to come by getting all your health foods and all your vitamins and minerals in your body. Because we don't want to lose any more people to the sickness and this garbage that's going on with the community. All right? So against the detriment of evil, may all good stand. And may we stand together as God's heritage, which is hip hop. So to everybody out there, we say peace and we out.